city of Mount Vernon, a place where 17,000 people call home. Known for a bustling downtown, scenic views, economic opportunities, educational excellence, and a safe place to live, work, and raise a family. But what are the life supporting systems that allow our thriving community to function day to day? To really understand how so many people coexist, we need to look beneath the surface of the earth. Under our streets and neighborhoods here in Mount Vernon, we have three systems that the, the city maintains. There is the sanitary sewer system, which has 119 miles, and it has a service area of about 10.27 square miles. We have 416 miles of water distribution mains with a service area of, of 9.37 square miles. And our uh, MS4 system has the storm system. Um, it has 70.28 miles of inventory sewer system. Uh, that's a mix of both public and private. That's what we know of. So in the 70s, Mount Vernon split the sanitary sewer and the stormwater sewer ahead of the curb to um, help what discharges into the scenic Cocosing uh, River. So in the downtown area was the first place they did this. They split um, the sanitary and the stormwater up. There was only, they, at that point in time, they were a combined sewer, which means everything went to one. And then, of course, that came to the wastewater treatment plant and all of that had to be treated or at least our storm water does not have to be treated in the same way that water that carries residuals and uh, human waste and you know industrial waste has to be treated. While we were working to separate our water and wastewater systems, the nation was working uh, hard at creating the Clean Water Act to help uh, improve water quality across the country for posterity. Uh, we have just recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of our Kokosing River becoming a state, a state and national scenic river. The water that's discharged from this wastewater treatment plant goes into the scenic Kokosing River and from there it goes into the Wellhounding River, went then to the Muskingum River, all the way to the Ohio River which then eventually goes to the Mississippi River and to the Gulf of Mexico. So everything that's going into our river here is affecting everybody downstream of us so anything that we're discharging, they're going to have to deal with. Because the nutrients in the water that's being discharged, if they're too high, they're creating algae blooms possibly, or they can be um, uptaking of oxygen and the fish and other wildlife in the, that live in the water need that oxygen in order to live. The Mount Vernon Wastewater Treatment Plant sees daily between 1.5 million and 21 million gallons uh, a day with an average of about three million gallons, which is the equivalent of three of the swimming pools at Kenyon. And a lot of that can be uh, tied to rain events with uh, rainwater getting into the system. We have to treat it all like it's sewage, so it all gets treated with the chemical treatments, so rainwater into the system is added expense. And we actively try to identify those sources and eliminate them. The decisions we make when we are putting things in a storm drain, flushing things down the toilet, how we operate our wastewater plant, those decisions flow downstream to our neighbors and our friends. To sustain our quality of life requires careful planning and financial stewardship, not only for today, but for generations to come. It's easy to compare a couple of projects in our recent history. In 2020, we had a sewer line collapse at Liberty Street and Pennsylvania Avenue over by Phillips Park. Now over this two block area, we replace a small portion of this 190 year old sewer line. For 500 linear feet, it costs us a quarter of a million dollars. So when we compare our emergency project at Liberty and Pennsylvania to a planned project that was completed in 2016 on Plaza Drive uh, behind and beside Kroger, we were able to line over 2,000 linear feet of sanitary sewer without excavating the road, uh, and we believe this project's gonna be, have a useful life of over 80 years, maybe even longer. Uh, cost us $70,500.
Obviously, it is more economical to not have to dig up the road when we're trying to repair underground utilities. And once the sewer line collapses, we have no choice but to go in and replace it, and that's costly. When that city utility payment arrives, where does your money go? So when we look at the utility bill, 28% of their payment goes toward debt, 37% to wages and benefits, and 16% to capital improvements. So there are some other smaller numbers in there, but generally um, those are the big ticket items that, that the bill addresses. Think of it in these terms. A gallon of milk costs about $2.19, two liters of soda costs $1.69, a gallon of bottled drinking water is 89 cents. The all-in-one cost from the Mount Vernon utility bill equals one and one-half cents per gallon inside the city limits, and that includes clean drinking water and removal of the wastewater. If we start in 2021 with a schedule of reasonable rate increases, we'll be able to afford some major projects that are on the horizon. If we do nothing um, with rate increases, you see a major deficit coming. The two big components of this are obviously a large cost for digester repairs um, that we need to make and a large cost from uh, EPA mandated phosphorus requirements. Parts of our wastewater treatment plant were installed in the 1950s. Most of the plant has been working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, since 1981. Older parts of the plant are our focus and in need of replacement or upgrade. In terms of, of what we do now for phosphorus, we basically see it come in and we see it go out. We're going to have to remove all that and put it somewhere. So the, the EPA is going to require us to sequester it in some form, either biologically or with chemicals. We've done some testing and biological treatment doesn't work here. So we're going to have to go with chemicals. The problem with the chemicals is it generates more sludge for us. We've got digesters that were made in the 50s and have been in service since the 50s. Increasing the sludge draw on them, the sludge load I should say, by 20 to 40 percent will run them harder and we use up more room here in these hold tanks. We end up just having a whole lot more and we already are at our limit for storage and time for storage. So during the wet weather episodes, the Clinton Road lift station experiences high volumes of water and that exceeds its pumping capacities and it, it will actually overflow and that leads directly into the creek. The EPA has stepped in and mandated us to repair it and they've given us a compliance schedule of four years to get it taken care of. The sanitary sewer overflows, is, is that's a health issue. We can't have manholes, lift stations overflowing and you know that water then ends up on the streets, in the roads, in the waterways. You know it, it's not healthy for the people that live in the community or the environment that it's dumping into. It's really our duty as a city to make sure that we are releasing clean water into the environment and it's, it's like we're really temporary caretakers here uh, in a long line of generations of people who will come after us and so it's important certainly to me and I know to many people in the community that we look out for the future generations um, and not saddle them with bad decisions or procrastinate on things that we might uh, not want to handle today. As we strive to live happier and more fulfilling lives, Mount Vernon is now faced with a decision about its wastewater system. As water surely does carve away the stone, so too does our responsibility to care for our life-sustaining systems.